Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Alexi Aaron Podcast. I am Aaron, the web guy, and as always, I am joined by... Alexi Aaron. Uh, she's the writer. She's the reason why you guys are here. And we have, once again, special guests... The Red Pen. And we brought the Red Pen in for one very specific reason. I didn't want to talk so much. <laughs> she's going to take over the lie and share today. Isn't that right? Yes, that is correct. That is correct. She's very, she's very on point today. Uh, and uh, the reason for this, uh, Lexi, is that we are going to be talking about, we're having a discussion on Sandtrap, the third haunted series novel. Yes, my favorite. Oh, you heard it straight from the source here, folks. What was that? It's my favorite. Oh, so this one obviously is very dear to you. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, um... It's, was... my, it's my favorite cover. It's your favorite cover? It's, it has two of the most favorite haunts in there. Two of your favoriteest haunts? Because it's never been done before. Because it's never been done before. So, that sounds... It's, well, it sounds exciting to me. <laughs> um, in that sense. I'm glad it's you know, talk, good to talk about your favorite. Um, for my money, um, I'm going to get in my piece first before we uh, let uh, the red pen go. Because we figure, who's read the books more than the editor? <laughs> Maybe you guys, but I don't think uh, uh, anyone's read the books more than the editor or writer. So they'll be taking over the majority of the discussion. Uh, but what I'd like to ask first um, is I very much enjoy the in medias res or in the middle of the action introduction to the book. And uh, I really enjoyed that aspect. And that was, uh, that was that your first time doing it? Yes. Um, my father always said that what he admired about me most is that I could hit the ground running, so I thought I would try to start a book running. And it wasn't about pushing out of the car that one time? No, not that one time. Okay. Family Secrets. Oh, Family, se oh, family Secrets, <laughs> yes. Yeah, a lot of those will come out uh, and everything if <laughs> we're doing this. But I, I, I definitely thought that this one started off with a, with a bang and it kept going, so... Uh, beyond that, I'm going to be uh, taking the back seat. I know it's hard for me. I'm a little bit of a showboat. But we're going to have the red pen uh, ask, uh, ask away. And I'm going to try to be quiet. We'll see how it works. Okay. Take it away, red pen. Um, well, firstly, uh, it's hard to imagine now, but back in Sandtrap, Mia wasn't yet a fully fledged member of the Peeps team. That's true. Uh, Ted seems to be largely responsible for keeping her connected with the group. Um, although in this book, Mia and Wit reconnect, did you have some idea then of developing Ted and Mia's relationship? In the beginning when I was writing, um, I was more concerned with that I wasn't enjoying as a writer uh, um, what Mia was going through. I thought that I would give her some wins, and I don't know if, if any other female feels this way, but we always have a crush in high school, and we always wanted to know what would happen if we actually got together with that crush. So I thought I would write it. So Ted, at this point, when I first started writing the book, um, wasn't immediately as a um, in mind as a uh, romantic interest. Well, Beth seemed to think that there was something between Mia and Ted, because uh, this is where the friendship between Beth and Mia starts to rapidly disintegrate. Yes. Um, Ted. There was something between Ted and Mia, unbeknownst to Mia. Unbeknownst. Don't you like that word? I can't I never spell it. I do like that it. word. I also <laughs> wanted to briefly mention that obviously spoilers for the third Haunted Series novel um, and such. And, uh, but we try to keep it in there. Yeah, if you haven't read it. Oh. No, we, it's okay. It's it, it's actually it's very much assumed if you're if you're in the haunted series or in the sand trap discussion. You've read it. You've read it. <laughs> but I just wanted to quick if point not, that out. Run away. <laughs> if not, if, if not, run away and uh, uh, skip to the end, the last minute or so, because it'll be fun news. All right. I'm sorry for interrupting. Please continue. That's a good point. I didn't think that. <laughs> well, no, I forgot to say it. That's on me. That's the MC's fault. Um, uh, but yes, you were saying the fact that things between Ted and uh, or Beth and Mia. Well, Ted uh, oh, seems interested. Sorry. Yeah, Ted's interested in Mia. Um, he likes her. She's funny. He's attracted to her. Um, she doesn't see him any more than one of the team members. He is. He's basically kind of her uh, conduit into it. He he's the one that keeps track of her. That tells her what the team is doing. 
um, keeping her involved. He wants her in the team. Um, she's probably pretty happy just being a consultant at this okay. point in the book. Um, also in this book, we get closer to both Bernard and Ralph, and you give us a fuller understanding of the relationship between Mia and her godfathers and insight into why Mia and her parents aren't close. Can you talk about that? Um, yeah. Uh, Mia was basically, uh, like her name, M-I-A, missing in action with Ooh. her parents. Is, is, was that a little bit of trade secret? Yes, pretty much that's where her name came from. Wow, okay. I didn't um, actually know that. <laughs> sorry for all you other Mias. Uh, I'm sure your parents didn't name you that for that reason. Uh, if so, write a book about it. Um, basically, uh, Mia had v uh, two very inattentive parents. and um, But fortunately, she had two godfathers, a, a, a gay partnership, um, Bernard and Ralph. And Ralph basically took over teaching her. He was her mother. And um, Bernard, in a sense, the father figure. And so she, during the times that her parents would allow her to be with them, she enjoyed pretty much a normal household. Mm -hmm. Well, I know uh, me and the red pen certainly know something about inattentive parents. <laughs> we have one right now, I swear. She just is at the computer, clickety clickety clap, and you can't get, you know, you can't get her attention for life us. I mean, I, I'm I, so evil. It, just sometimes, you know, I, I, I really want a soda. I want to ask for one. No, we got to write in this book instead. She's All right. diligent. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, moving on. Um, well, okay, continuing with the theme of relationships, um, all of the relationships in the Haunted series are complicated. And I like the realism that people don't simply learn lessons and continually grow towards their best selves. Uh, in everyday life, people make mistakes, they repeat mistakes, they bring up old wounds, they go back on their word, or they get bogged down by their insecurities. Um, and it might be frustrating sometimes uh, to go through that, but I do think that adds some realism to those relationships. Well, that's basically I, I, what I try, what I'm doing is writing books that fall in the fantasy realm, but make them as real as possible. These are real characters that go through real things, or fantasy characters that go through very real things. Um, if some, I mean, we don't learn, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really learn right off the bat. I make a lot of mistakes, and then it kind of clicks in. A lot of us tend to, are gravitated towards, oh, we can fix it, we can do this again. No, you can't. Go someplace else. <laughs> okay. And in, in relationships, if it ain't working, don't go into another relationship that ain't working. Mm. Right, right. I, I usually have a, a well, what, what is my rule the, when people play the makeup breakup game? It's like, okay, once is, you know, accident. Second time, worrisome. Third time, you know, strike, you're out. Baseball. Right? <laughs> is, that, is that related enough? I think so. <laughs> From the male point of view. Well, okay, sure enough. Uh, uh, but yeah, so I think that's a, definitely the relationships and how they the, they were growing this whole time, but the characters are much more, uh, to, they're much more to real in that sense because they make mistakes. Well, in this book, uh, Mia and Bert are kind of reeling a little bit because they broke up, but but they don't really know why they broke up. Mm, unresolved, All of a sudden, in a sense. they were there together, and the next moment they weren't. And Bert is unnerved by the fact that Mia so quickly could move on to other people. Okay. Well, of course, she's not really moving on to Wit so much as continuing, I guess, where... Where she was with Wit yeah. before. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's good, it's good observation. Ooh, yes. Okay, now leaving all of these gray areas, <laughs> um, <laughs> how did you come up with the idea for the character of, of Courtney Fairchild, her ghost being trapped in Fulgurite? Okay, I love science. Okay. Let's explain fulgurite. Uh, okay, fulgurite, if you don't know what that is, <laughs> that is when lightning st strikes sand or <laughs> ground that has a lot of sandy um, particles in it, and it traps air um, into it. And in some cases, um, there's actually a gas that's, that's trapped inside this, this very fragile glass tubing which is um, made from the heat of the lightning hitting the sand. So I thought if you could trap gas 
in Fulgurite, you could trap a spirit. So that's where the idea of uh, Courtney being trapped inside a glass came from. Mm -hmm. I never heard any place else before. <laughs> of course, I'm not extensively read in my genre as I should be, but I thought this was something new and I wanted to uh, work with. And also I got a chance of being, um, get back at some of the mean girls. Mm. You know, those gorgeous beauties that are just going after people's money. All right. Okay. That, that was... Revenge! <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of uh, lo having to do extensive reading and research, mm -hmm. um, sand traps, menaces, or resolutions are dependent on a... They can tell I'm reading this part. <laughs> are dependent on a knowledge of rock-forming minerals and gems, underground caves... Did you set out to write such a geological story? <laughs> no. No. Um, actually, um, I have to... Well, as I'm writing, my book takes me places. And I try to make it as accurate as possible, so I have to stop and research. Is this possible? Has this happened? Find places like the um, situations or the, uh, the scenes that I put my situations in. Sometimes you uh, send the red pen off to research for each yes. other. Yes. Uh, sending the red <clears throat> pen off to research is like getting her a vacation. Yeah, I do enjoy research. <laughs> she loves, is, it, loves it. She is a bloodhound uh, um, in terms of Google. We, <laughs> oh, we even research um, whether or not um, somebody... We, we kind of... We don't tie her up, but we envision her tied up. Like the incident with uh, Bev, oh, be, uh, Beth being tied oh, Beth. up. On the ceiling in Sand Trap of the Bar, we actually worked with Kelly with that. <laughs> or did you? <laughs> did I block it out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do remember one thing um, for another book. It's like, okay, Kelly, now, if you're in this position and you're on a slant, <laughs> how long could you stay in that position? It's all in research, Kelly. And... Yeah. It's, it's, an, it's, a, it's amazing how many times in the Lexiern... Uh, household, we are asked to pretend you're a dead body. You know, that, that comes up uh, quite a lot, actually. Maybe too much? Well, <laughs> I know how to escape from duct tape now, so. Yeah, that's yes, true. that's true. She just chews through it. <laughs> um, okay, well, obviously, uh, the research was a big part of it, but uh, I think that this book may have started uh, a little bit more. Uh, concern over maybe some more serious themes and and such and I know you wanted to talk about that yes because um, reading reviews and comments there were a few readers who have expressed concern over uh, threats of sexual violence that occur in some of the haunted series novels uh, and sand trap Mia experiences this from both the the bikers and later, some of the exhibits in you know brought back to consciousness in the museum. Uh, very different from Ben Stiller's Night at the Museum movies. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I didn't have any slapping monkeys. <laughs> or people slapping their monkeys. But is this a subject you'd like to address? Um, basically, um, my thoughts, when you're dealing with certain time period, um, the 60s, the biker gangs, and then also dealing with ancient Americans, um, the males would use the threat of sexual violence to control the females and to control the males. So I wasn't using it as exploitative um, ever. Um, I don't, I don't believe in, in in writing exploitative books, but it seemed to fit the situation. What are what would you be mo most frightened about when a, a a biker gang is 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 surrounding you? I'm sure it's not your manicure, you know. And the same thing with ancient Americans. How are they going to threaten you? They can't communicate with you, so they're going to use body threats. And this is what I went for in this. And I, and it, it wasn't intentional. But a lot of times, what frightens us most as females is a um, interference with us sexually. Yeah, well, I mean, even today, it's you know used as a weapon of war. Really. Yes, it is. And um, I think so. It's not about, yeah, not exploitative, but the idea that someone making you feel as if they have power over you. So right. So it's a, a physical and a psychological threat. And and I would like to point out also 
that my character does come through this, always. Mm -hmm. You know, she's strong. She comes through this. Well, absolutely. It's um, not like throwing a lamb to wolves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that uh, it's it's obviously. Um, we, you know, you speak of it being, you know, back in the past or, you know, uh, in terms of the spirits and such, but unfortunately it is all too much of a real problem, uh, the threat of it and all this and that such. So I think it is a sensitive subject. Yes. So, you know, I and in think fact, the last, well. uh, the last book that we, uh, wrote, um, uh, no, actually was, was restitution, wasn't it? Careful spoilers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there is a book in the future well, yeah. that that we actually <laughs> kind of okay. warn you in the in the in the blurb that it has uh, very intense um, situations in it, but I never take it beyond the pale. No, yeah, the, the I'm very, very careful. Worst doesn't happen. Very careful to do that. Yes, the very worst does not happen. Well, because the bread pen has to edit it. Yeah, and she'll you... slap me silly. <laughs> Occasionally, she comes out looking as white as a ghost. Or pale as a ghost. That's just my complexion. Oh, it's just your complexion? Yeah. Going for the, the geisha look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on from that subject, um, uh, in this book we're introduced to a lot of new characters. Uh, we've got Dave and Richie, Clara and her ghostly mother, uh, Doc. Um, so do you have any favorites? Well, obviously because I used them again. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, you'll find it in my books that I I reuse a lot of characters. Um, they don't just disappear, and you know, just because I have shut the book and picked up another one. Um, Dave Stoner, Dave, you know, um, that was my belligerent teen, belligerent. I can't mm. say that teen, yeah. teenager. So, you, so, so it's not. You're saying there's not many one shots. No. Uh, one, you know, in in terms of one. Warning: I have 378 characters so far. I don't. I don't <sighs> leave a lot of them. How behind. many are named Michael? Too many. <laughs> 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 but I also Clara, who is the uh, glass cleaner in this. In the museum. Yeah. In the museum, she is unaware, but she's um, Mia finds out uh, when she visits the home with Ted that she's being protected by the ghost of her mother, of her immigrant mother. And her, her, the ghost is so very strong, and it protects the family, and in this case, Mia and Ted also, from bad spirits. Um, I like the idea of, uh, in a sense, not necessarily a guardian angel, but a guardian spirit, like Murphy and Drag. <laughs> so is, is Murphy and Drag, would you, uh, of the question, your favorites? Murphy uh, of this of this book. Oh, you mean uh, Clara's mother? Yes, I think she's she's a strong favorite. But I do reuse Dave and Richie. Right. Okay. Okay. I like the whole idea that the guy is sitting on top of uh, the roof of the bar, watching all this horribleness, and he's just sitting there smoking a joint. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it the ridiculous the ridiculousness of it really speaks to me. I can I can visualize <coughs> the movie the movie scene in that sense. You know, it's it's the classic bar uh, like, like like a barroom brawl and the one drunk who's just kind of weaving around and miraculously not getting hit. Or the, the weird video a few years ago there was like a big fight and there's just a guy just eating his pizza and not even looking at it. Yes. Him. Yeah, that was a great one. It's just like there's a, I think it was a, a riot even it was, or something. Yeah, it was something. It's just like I'm enjoying my pizza. Yeah, yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> um I know that this is and I'm not going to say it because this is like I believe one of Lexi Aaron's favorite things. I will tell you guys that this is actually printed out and put somewhere uh, on this in phrase. Our house. This yeah. phrase is on, somewhere in our house, and uh, this is definitely something you're very proud of, and that would be. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, the quote that Ted says: mm -hmm. "Or uh, magic before science, all in compliance. Science before magic, things could get tragic." And my question is: that considering that Ted is a scientist and an inventor, what does he mean by magic before science? Well, he's also uh, Mia symbolizes magic. You put mad. You put me before. He puts me up before himself. Or if you want to get into the whole metaphysical thing, is they use science to um, try to explain magic, but you really can't use magic to explain science. It's just, it's foolhardy to do so. Okay. So science can't. 
<laughs> so magic can come before <laughs> science, but science can't come before magic. Well, I, I was thinking, is it maybe because things that appear magical, science can't explain yet? Or science maybe could aim to try to understand that, yeah. but it's it's the unknown. It's But if you want to take something... It's, it's kind of silly. If you don't believe in magic in the first place, you really... How would it how would it explain science? So it's just like you have to put one before the other. And in this book, because it's a fan, fantasy book, we put magic before science. Yeah, because things move beyond the laws we of ask, physics in the future. We ask you to suspend your disbelief to the point of tearing your hair out. Yes, I know that. No, not to that point. Maybe before. Before? before? Yeah. Oh, but if you have Is that why I'm losing my hair? What could, the heck? It could be. It could be. <laughs> but the, the idea is... Um, we want you to let go of things, but we want to make them still as real as possible. And the real part is the relationships, are I think, are pretty real. Mm-hmm. Well, I know um, a lot of times in our culture, well, in, 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 mythbusters, science is generally trying to explain away how something has been done, um, rather than you know explain trying to debunk versus trying to find out if it's you know if it actually was magic and such. So well, said, it's not always, though, about dispelling or debunking Well, yeah, but it seems to lean towards that more. Yeah. Well, some people say I that, think. you know, say miracles are magical, and and are you going to really take something that someone believes is a true miracle and explain it away scientifically? Um, you might be able to say, well, it could have happened this way, mm-hmm. but you can't, you're not there. You you you're not there with all your meters and such. You don't know what happened at that point. Experiencing it well, first. If someone's experienced something, they feel it's a miracle. Probably best not to Debbie Downer them. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw an angel, huh? You sure it wasn't just a bright light, you know? Oh, describing the bright lights or or uh, uh, how you people that that uh, experience things after death and are brought back. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even venture there. I mean, they have so many explanations, and yet we can also debunk the scientific explanations. So there you go. Okay, let's do that now. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, okay. I don't have any of my beakers ready. <laughs> Sci- science involves beakers. I know that much. And you Bunsen know, burners. Bunsen burners. And uh, you know what? I didn't even take chemistry in high school. Seriously. I don't know how I got away with it. Earth science is what I took. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was pretty good be, on the geology part yeah. here. I have a question for Red Pen. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did you enjoy uh, the Team Ted um, and Team uh, Whitney between um, Bernard, how Bernard was always Team Ted and Ralph was always Team Whitney? Did you enjoy that? Uh, yeah, I thought that was fun. I mean, I was never on Team Whitney, as you know. But uh, the idea that they wanted different things for Mia... Um, I thought that was fun. Okay, good. That's, uh, that, I, I've never seen or read a Twilight thing, but I know the reference that was being made there. <laughs> is that used other places, or is it, because I know Team Edward, Team Jacob. Is that used other, yeah, other people ways? Yeah, they do. For lots of things. Okay. Because. That's a Twilight thing. Yeah, yeah that's what, well, no, that's what I thought at first, and I was like, oh my gosh, no. Um. I didn't even know about that when people started saying that to me. Oh, I'm Team Murphy. You know, we haven't talked about Murphy at all oh this. yeah we didn't Murphy um, Murphy di- I guess it w- didn't talk a lot but Murphy had a lot to do with this Murphy again steps in and, s- and saves Mia mm-hmm. um, he's always has her back um, he uh, for the first time left his comfort zone in order to do so they had to uh, basically dig up part of him and take him with it this is you mm-hmm. know in in uh, ghostly attachments. That's when they um, first took the axe head out, and uh, also um, he he fought off a biker gang as they travel as, as they tried to escape. It was one ghost against all of the bikers. So we have to give uh, Team uh, Murphy. Team as Murphy. Murphy. We have to give him all right. You know. Well. Without Murphy, there is no life. <laughs> but he's not alive. But he's not alive. <laughs> well, it's it's it, it's easy to say for me that you know Murphy. Uh, sometimes less said, uh, the less said the better, uh, which is the opposite of me, I guess. But I know I'm uh, Team Murphy. So what can I say? Uh, he's probably my favorite character. Yeah, I'm Murphy. Just saying it. <laughs> Murphy. Murphy insists upon it. <laughs> insists upon it. Yes. 
Um, all right. Well, I think at this point, any last thoughts about Sand Trap? Uh, you, like you said, it was your favorite. And yeah, it was my favorite because it it was it gave me the opportunity. I thought I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to write something other people haven't written. And also going forward with the oob situation. Oh, oobing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yes, out of body experience. Yes. Yes. Ubing. Yeah, so so that's the thing. So a lot of things were introduced to Zantra. Well, that was introduced in, in Ghost Attachments, yeah. but it was maybe perhaps taking it the next level mm-hmm. right. in this book. See, throughout throughout the Haunted series is Mia tests out and finds new things about herself. They just they just kind of emerge that she has to deal with. And um, which makes it harder actually to write a um, haunted book because the more powerful she is, the less of the things that normally happen in books, the less stupid things happen. Well, she, they, and the group gains experience. So why would I have them make the same mistakes? With every book, it gets harder to write. For, for more me, challenging. Not, not, not as a job, but more challenging to for, write. From a gamer experience, it sounds like uh, they're gaining levels, levels. That's what yeah. I in That's RPGs. A, oh, and, okay. And it's the and the uh, power creep, something becoming too powerful, so the things become too easy. Yeah. So that's that's gotta be a fun thing. So the thing final to bosses have to be tougher. Yeah. Yes, the final yeah. bosses are very tough. Well, okay. So I, last off, sand trap. We're good. We're good. All right. Well, at this point, uh, we would like to say thank you, first off, for listening to us. Uh, for the podcast, and now uh, your reward for having done so is uh, we have a little bit of a preview. We're not reading out anything uh, because Pen hasn't edited yet. But <laughs> this is the, remind me which number haunted novel this, this is. This is number nineteen, 19. of the novels. Nineteen. Okay, and just uh, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, about what the next book's going to be. You know, a synopsis, you know. Sir. Okay, well, first of all, it finally has a title. So it's, this is super spoilers. Yeah, it's super called... Super spoilers. It's yeah. called <laughs> The Long Game. And mm. in this book, um, I am going to open up everything and tell you why Mia is why Mia is. Okay. What she Ooh. actually is. So we're, we're just... We're just going <laughs> to take a... We're going to take the veil and rip it apart and... Um, uh, it'll be it's a surprise pretty much to her too. Well, yeah. And yeah. we're also dealing with a ramped up Murphy because in in those who haven't read the last book, catch up. But this is a spoiler. This is spoilers okay. for okay. people all the way caught up. Murphy's or, Murphy's power has ramped up. Um, he he has done this to be able to protect his friends, so he would not be taken over by by more powerful spirits. So he draws from the earth. He energy. draws from the earth. His his main um, giver of power is Mother Nature. So that also plays a significant role here. And all she gives me is a sunburn. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well obviously we don't want to uh, you know, that and obviously uh no, and and this is the best part. How far in are you? Oh, I am so close to the first draft ending um, that if, if they were to uh, lock me back downstairs, it would be finished in two days. <laughs> you can I'll get the key. You can get the key. <laughs> you blame that on me too, uh, me too folks. Uh, I'm going to take the, the shot in this one because uh, Alexi's been helping me out, taking me to various doctor's appointments when I couldn't drive, etc. And that eats into her writing time. So that's on me. Okay, so send your hate mail to uh, <laughs> to me, but you oh, so just still send it to Alexi Aaron. But you know, <laughs> no, this is a very this me. this book uh, started off. I thought I was going to write a novella uh, because um, I want people ask me a question. They want to know. It all started off with finding out how John Sheriff John Ryan and Father Paulo Santos how they met, and I started the book with that. And then everything else fell into place. Mm. All right. Yeah. It's another long book, so um, <laughs> be prepared, Red Pen. Uh-huh. <laughs> the, 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 you're ready, and the Red Pen, is there anything else for you? No, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the next book. Great. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, for myself, uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, putting this together for the website and such. And my other things, uh, oh, this, is where, this is where I get to plug, yeah. that I... That, I do video game commentary, da 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 da. Uh, see all gaming, etc. on YouTube. If you subscribe, I love you. 
No, um, does that sound like Teddy Ruxpin? What would Teddy Ruxpin say in this situation? I love you. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Not Z I Y A L. <laughs> Gay uh, me. Yes. Uh, Z I Y A L. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you, yeah I'll, I'll put links in the thing. No. Uh, but it's the fun, the plugging part of this. Yeah. How am I the MC, but I'm plugging things. I love it. <laughs> um, so, okay. At this point, I think we're all set. So, once again, uh, Aaron, the web guy, I'd like to say thank you, and... Alexi Aaron. And the red pen. Thank you for reading. Yes, thank you for reading, thank you for listening, and we hope everyone has a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>